is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seeks to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. Every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. I have 
victory There is a light Salvation's flame Christ undefeated Trampled the grave See now the cross Be lifted high The light has come The light has won Behold the Christ Hope has a name His name is Jesus My Savior's cross Has set the sinner free Hope has a name
the happy Mother's Day in a foreign language. So I'm going to wish you a happy Mother's Day in Arabic. Aid Ummahat Saeed. I hope the Lord will bless you. You know, when I think about mothers, uh, I think about the Lord. The Lord and his uh, sovereignty uh, and his power, uh, self-contained and satisfied within himself, needs nothing. Yet at one point, I imagine he discovered that he was lacking one thing. So he decides to do something about it. He becomes incarnate, is born of a woman. Then he knows what it means to have a mother. He had a father. He has many brethren. He was lacking one thing, having a mother. Now, when we pray for our mothers, he knows what we're talking about. He knows what it means to have a mom. Today I wanted to reflect with you on the life or the experience of a mother that the Bible talks about that not many usually reflect on. Special mother, you'll know what I'm talking about in a minute, but no doubt if time has you know, would have allowed us, there are many lessons we can learn from her life. An amazing woman in in the way she dealt with calamity and difficulty. I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings, chapter 17. 1 Kings, chapter 17. I want to read starting with verse 8 to verse 16. Then the word, word of the Lord came to him, arise, came to Elijah. We're talking about the prophet Elijah. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow 
there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first bring me a little cake of it and bring it to me and afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel. The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Father, it's your word, it's your spirit, and it's your work. I pray that as we delve into the word, that you would lead our hearts, you would open our minds, help our understanding. And then help us to be obedient to the teaching of the word. I pray especially this morning for all mothers present. May you bless them, reward them for the labor of love that they do every day, unrewarded, silently, yet lovingly. Bless them. Encourage their hearts. And help them to be the women and the mothers your heart desires. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Interesting story. If we kept going, there's more about this woman, an amazing woman, um, and an amazing mother. Uh, rarely do we hear about her, although Jesus referred to her in the book of Luke. She's one of the characters of the Old Testament that did not sort of... Uh, or was not forgotten. Even Jesus mentions her. When he gives an example uh, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Luke, uh, and speaks about Elijah, but he refers to this incident and to this woman. Now, I want you, before we go into uh, 
the things that uh, I feel the Holy Spirit would have us learn this morning, I want you to understand the context of the situation. Elijah had been by the brook Cherith for about a year, being fed by the ravens. You know there was total drought, three years and six months, no rain. And all of a sudden, the Lord, seeing the situation that there was no water in the brook, says to Elijah, I want you to move. I want you to go to the city of Zarephath. Now, Zarephath actually is in Lebanon. I've been there several times. Too many to count. And it's very close to the city of Sidon, which is where Jezebel came from. And you know... Who Jezebel is, the story of Jezebel, the character of Jezebel, the evil of Jezebel. All of a sudden, the Lord is telling Elijah, I want you to move into the lion's den. Right there in Sidon or next to Sidon. We know it was an evil place. They worshiped Baal. It was a den of iniquity, so to speak. Their worship practices were all idolatrous. Unholy sacrifices, temple prostitution, you name it, it happened. And God is telling him, go there. In the midst of that difficult situation, ungodly situation, there is a woman, a mother. Many a time we forget the difficult circumstances our mothers lived through. It might not have been a place like Zarephath, but nonetheless, difficult circumstances. How many a time we know our mothers lived through abuse, neglect, How many a time they were deserted? How many a time they had to fend on a number of fronts for the sake of the children? So when we honor mothers, we don't think about a mother who cooks a meal, just cooks a meal, or a cake. We need to go beyond that. Look at the real circumstances they had to fight through and live through just for the sake of their children and their families. So this lady was one of those women. Now apparently, when we read the text, we understand that she was originally a woman of means. Apparently, her husband, who was dead by then because we know she was a widow, she was a woman of means. And the reason we know that is if had we continued in the text to read about the death of her son and what she said to Elijah and what happened in that story, we discover that she had a house with two floors. And that... Back then, 
showed that the individual, the owner of the house, was a person of means. So apparently she had lived a comfortable life before the drought. It's interesting that we read, for example, when she started cooking using the flour and the oil that the Lord kept multiplying for her, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to read the word she and her household. So apparently she may have had servants. So there is more than meets the eye about this woman. But, as it is for all of us, life circumstances change. Now there was a drought. This woman of means was out at the city gate trying to find some wood that she can use to light up and cook something for her and for her son. It's interesting also as we look at, uh, at the circumstances of the story is that she realized she was going to die. But even to her dying breath, she wanted to cook something for her son. I mean, think about it for a second. Just logically, if you knew that even if you eat, you're going to die, you might not care. Okay, if we're going to die, why should I cook? Why should I go through the trouble? We're going to die anyway. No, not for this mother, not for this mother. That's why I kind of put a title for my reflection on the text, A Mother to Remember, A Mother to Remember. There are five things, I promise you, I won't preach long. You know, uh, they say that um, there are one common thing between a short-winded Baptist preacher and Santa Claus. You know what it is. They both don't exist. <laughs> Someone else said that uh, between a hostage situation and a long-winded sermon, there's a thin line. So I promise you I won't preach long. I have something ticking in front of my eyes right here. So uh, plus, I uh, just noticed uh, there's one in facing me too. Uh, now there's one more factor for y'all to prove you're a Baptist church, okay? One is the clock. The other is a coffee machine outside. Uh, I have yet to see that, so I can judge fairly that y'all are truly Baptists, okay? It's what? Oh, it is out there. <laughs> Bless you, my children. Bless you. Um, so anyway, let's look at this lady. Number one, I want you to, to notice that although she was living in an area full of idol, Baal worshipers, she recognized the voice of God. Okay, go back to the text. God is speaking to Elijah. He says, I have commanded a widow. So, in a way... That widow was not surprised when Elijah approached her. I have commanded a widow to feed you. Now, I looked at 
some commentaries trying to figure out, is this woman, to use today's term, a Christian? Was she born again? I was surprised to see that many commentators, obviously it's only a matter of interpretation, don't believe that she was. And they focus on the term that she uses or the statement that she makes as the Lord your God lives. She doesn't say as the Lord my God. Now that changes at the end of the story, at the end of the second story, and I'm going to read that verse for you in a minute. But nonetheless... She recognized the voice of God to feed the prophet. You see, in the midst of famine, in the midst of a drought, in the midst of false gods, she was able to distinguish the voice of the true God. Now, Was she like Cornelius in the New Testament? Who was still praying, he was still pleading with God, and the Lord spoke to him through the angel? I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we meet the Lord. But nonetheless... A mother to remember recognizes the voice of God. That's what guides her. That's what governs her behavior. Whether towards her husband or her children, the church, the community. And that's why many a time you have heard the term, She's a godly mother. What do we mean by a godly mother? A mother who's concerned about what God thinks and lives it out. Not what the society thinks, what the community, what the culture what God thinks. That's why she's a godly mother. She recognized the voice of God. It may not have made any sense, when Elijah said to her, get me some water, I don't know if that was a test. You know, they just met. Get me some water, okay? Well, on your way, get me a morsel of bread. And he's waiting for the reaction. Oh, I don't have any. Okay? She tells him, I have a little flour, a little oil. Okay, cook something. But before you cook for you and your son... Get me some. Now put yourself in, your sh- in her shoes. That's the last of the flour, the last of the oil. You care about your children. And then someone tells you, feed me first. And then take care of the rest. Would you do that? She heard the voice of the Lord. Number two. She was a woman who shouldered responsibility. Broad shoulders, I might add. Again, let's go back to the story. She's a widow. 
That's the first thing that we know about. Even the Lord tells Elijah that ahead of time. He says, I've commanded a widow. I mean, for God's sake, Lord, find me a woman that has a husband, that has uh, uh, maybe uh, adult children that can take care of me, that can pamper me. I am the man of God. A widow? But not just any widow. So you understand she's raising her son alone. She's a single mother, if you like. And we have many these days. Does that give them the excuse to live a life that does not recognize the, wo uh, the voice of God? No. She was still governed by what God said. She was taking care of a son without the presence of a father. She was living in difficult circumstances. Then the drought came. As a result, famine came. And then, very shortly, death will come. Did she shirk responsibility? No. I want to cook for me and my son. Can you hear her little boy? Mama, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Of course, children don't understand circumstances sometimes. If you tell them there isn't enough money or enough food or enough this or that, they might not understand, not because they don't want to, but because they are children. And the mother did not shirk responsibility. Now, add to that, she had a guest. Can you imagine somebody just barging in? Hey, give me water. Give me bread. If they came to me, I would say, well, get your own water. Get your own bread. What are you coming to me for? I mean, you know what it is now. You know the circumstances. You know how bad the circumstances are. And you're asking me? No excuse. She didn't give him an excuse. She told him what the situation was. She told him, I, I have just a little, and I'm going to cook. We're going to die. He says, get me a morsel, and she does, which means when she said she didn't have enough, she was not trying to make an excuse. She was just telling Elijah what the situation was. A mother to remember is a mother that takes responsibility seriously. Responsibility for her home, for that woman, family came first. Now forgive me, ladies, but family comes before career. Family comes before things we'd like to do outside the home. Activities, social engagements, family. You know what the biggest problem in America these days are is? The biggest problem in America, Satan has attacked the core fabric of the family. And with the breakdown of the family, society has broken down. You see, God established the family before he established the church. Before he established society, community life. 
established the family and gave the family, every member of the family, a role, especially the mother. Someone said that the wife and mother is the main pole that holds the tent of the family up. Don't you ever be fooled. It's not the husband. It's not the man. It's the mother. You go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 1. The wisdom of the woman builds her home. He doesn't say that about the man. Several years ago, I lost my sister-in-law to cancer. She was a young woman at the peak of her energy and life. She ran marathons. She was a healthy individual. She ate only organic food. And all of a sudden, she has brain cancer, brain tumor. She was gone in two months. From the day we discovered it to the day she went to be with the Lord. Time passes. My brother tells me this. He says, I cannot tell you the times I have wished it was me who died and not Jill. I cannot do what she was doing to the family. Men don't quite understand that. But no one can replace the mother. She has the so uh, shoulders to bear the greatest responsibility. You think about it for a minute. She works at home. She works outside the home. She's in the church. She's a multitasker. And I'm not trying to make you feel good, ladies, although I don't mind if you do, okay? But this is reality. And a lot of times we men don't appreciate that. Men are not multitaskers in general. But mothers are. For that, this lady was a mother to remember. I hope you are too. Number three. Not only does she recognize the voice of God and she shoulders responsibility without excuses, she cares for God's people. She realized that Elijah was a man of God. She addressed him like that. In the following story, she addresses him directly as a man of God. And she cared for him. A mother to remember is a mother that takes care of God's people. I had an aunt who's gone to be with the Lord for years and years. Her house was like, a, for the lack of a better illustration, a bus station. Anybody coming through town would stop at her place. She would have a hot meal, any Christian, any child of God would come in through town. She would have a hot meal, uh, uh, a bed for him to, to sleep, a place to shower, although she had a one-bedroom house and three kids. But she cared for God's people. And I can't tell you how many went through that house and how many of them 
over time, became servants of Jesus Christ. That woman cared for Elijah and fed him. And, and interestingly enough, he wasn't passing through town. We know from the text that the Lord told him to dwell there. Can you imagine somebody moving into your house and saying, well, I'm coming here to dwell here. How about that? You don't know him from Adam. Tells you my name is Elijah. I'm a prophet. You know, God told me to come here and I'm coming here. And uh, Do you have a spare bedroom somewhere? Maybe, uh, well, if you don't, maybe the tool shed will do. But I'm going to stay. A few years ago, uh, the mission's housing in, in Conway was full. It was already reserved. And I was coming to town, and all of a sudden, uh, a family in Greenbrier, I'm sure you know them, uh, in Greenbrier hosted me. And they put me in their barn. And it was interesting enough there was a wall between where I slept and where the donkeys were. And they were kicking that wall all night long. <laughs> he just dwelt there, but she took care of God's people. God's people are always welcome in her home. Are they in yours? When was it the last time, and for, forgive me, your pastor didn't pay me to say this, but you might think he did, but when was the last time you invited your pastor to your home? Thank you for what you do. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for going out to the hospital to visit us. When was the last time you've had your pastor come out to your home? I'm not going to ask for a salary raise for him now. Next sermon I will. Next time. You know, I do these things so I get invited back, you know. She cared for God's people. Number four. She was a blessing to others. Because of her faith, and I didn't reflect a lot on her faith, but I think it's inherent in, this, in the things I'm saying. Because she believed what Elijah said, she went in and cooked, and all of a sudden the flour was overflowing, the oil was overflowing, there's plenty of both she could cook. Because she believed the word of God through Elijah, she blessed others. Not only did she eat, but so did her household. Why? Because she believed God. She believed his word. A mother to remember is a mother that believes the word of God, lives the word of God, obeys the word of God, and therefore, because of those prerequisites, she's a blessing to all those around her. One of the commentators said this about this text. He said, I can only imagine with the unending supply of flour and oil, not only just her household ate, but maybe the whole community started seeing bread coming out of that house. Plenty of bread, plenty of bread. And there's drought and famine in the land. She must have been a blessing to all those around her because of the blessing of God 
Because she believed God. Never underestimate what your faith as a mother can do. Several years ago, I was preaching at a church in, again, Greenbrier at Needs Creek. I preached and then gave the invitation. People came forward. Some people were praying at the altar, and uh, I was ready to wrap it up and A man started walking from the back. He was weeping audibly, crying hard, bawling his eyes out. And I was standing in front of the pulpit. So I walked a little bit toward him, received him, hugged him. He put his head on my shoulder, and he was weeping, could hardly speak. And he said, I want to accept Christ as my Lord. So we sat on the front row and I led him to Christ, prayed with him. The service was wrapped up and I started to walk out. And there was an elderly lady waiting for me at the door. She walked up to me. She said, you see that young man that walked and accepted Christ, walked to the front? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, that's my son. So I kind of congratulated her and encouraged her. She said, I want to tell you something. I've been praying for him for 24 years. She believed God. If you're praying for a child of yours that have not come to Christ yet, Don't give up. It might be a while. Keep praying and believe God. I knew someone who came to Christ. His mother prayed for him for years, and then she passed away before he was saved. During her funeral, he accepted Christ, and he made it public during the funeral. My friends, when you believe God, you're a blessing to others. Mothers, when you believe God, God will reward that faith by making you a blessing. And finally, she was a mother to remember as she experienced the goodness of God. Now there was plenty. Now there was abundance. Notice she did not hoard it. Oh, it's all mine, it's all mine, it's all mine. No. She experienced goodness and shared it. We know that she kept hosting Elijah. And when her son died and uh, uh, Elijah was instrumental in bringing him back to life, she said to, to Elijah, she said, Now I know you are a man of God and the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. I know because I have experienced the goodness of God in the land of the living, in the midst of drought, in the midst of famine, I have experienced the goodness of God. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. You may have uh, a challenging marriage Or some challenges at work or challenges with some of your kids. Listen to the voice of God. Keep shouldering your responsibility. Do what you need to do. Show care to God's people. 
be a blessing to others. And you will experience the goodness of God. You will be a mother to remember. You see, a lot of people remember their mothers. I've yet to hear somebody say something bad about their mothers. But usually they remember things when compared to spiritual things, there are mundane, regular, normal things mothers do. But how much better it is when your children stand in the gates and praise you, as Proverbs 31 says. They will praise you, not because you were a good cook, or you were a good wife, or you were uh, a good caretaker of the home, a homemaker. No, but because you were a godly mother that put God first, then her family, and then everything fell into place to experience the goodness would you bow your heads with me, please? The challenge for you today is to make this Mother's Day also a day to remember. Do you want to be a mother whose children will remember her fondly and joyfully These are the things that the Bible says need to be demonstrated. But my main concern is if there's any mothers here who have not accepted Christ. You see, the number one prerequisite is recognizing the voice of God. And you need to take what you heard today as God's voice to you. If you've not accepted him as Lord and Savior, you need to settle that right now. You need to settle that. Make this Mother's Day a memorable day by being the day you accepted Christ. You can do that Sitting where you are, you can do that. Coming forward, talk to the pastor, pray with him. If you have other challenges, or you need to make a commitment to Christ, you realize there are issues that need to be dealt with on the spiritual level so you can be the mother God has intended for you to be. The wife God has intended you to be. This is a time as we sing a hymn of invitation, please settle these issues and make it a memorable day and you can truly become a mother to remember.